from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Uh, howdy, Mr. Dollar. My name is Jake Denham. I own a cattle ranch out here in Craig, Colorado. How'd you like to come out here and see me? Colorado? That's right. I have a policy with one of your companies, Tri-Western, office over in Denver. Well, what seems to be the trouble, Mr. Denham? Uh, trouble? Oh, oh, nothing like that. Not at all. Then why have you called me? Well, you see, the brand I use in my beef cattle is a Lazy J.D. Yeah, you said your name is Jake Denham. That's right. But J.D. is your initials, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the lazy part fits me to a T. But now, why have you called me? Well, you see, I listen to your radio program every week. All those insurance cases you handle all over the country. Glad to hear it. And I just... Well, I thought the lazy J.D. being your initials, too, and and uh, all the local color out here, and... Well, maybe you'd like to come and uh, get some local atmosphere for one of your stories. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Dunham. If you have some insurance matter you'd like me to investigate... Oh, no, no, no. I told you why I thought you ought to come. So can you, right away? You sure there's nothing wrong out there? No, like I said, a lot of local color. Nice place to stay here at the ranch. Now, how about it? Well, I have a couple of days' work on some reports to finish up. Then right after that, huh? Well... Good, good. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Oh, uh, look... And everything's really okay, huh? Goodbye. Hmm. Mr. Denham, I think you're lying through your teeth. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Western Life and Casualty Insurance Company Home Office, Denver, Colorado. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the bum steer matter. Expense account item one, 370, long distance call to Hal Versky, my contact at Tri Weston in Denver. Johnny, good to hear from you. Are you out in this neighborhood? Nope, still in Hartford. Hal, I want you to okay an expense account for me. Well, now that depends. Listen, do you know a client of yours by the name of Jake Denham? As I recall, he owns a big cattle ranch over near the little town of uh, Craig. Uh-huh. Carries a straight life for something like 40, 50,000. Well, look, I got a phone call from him begging me to come out there and see him. Oh, something wrong? He says not, but I don't believe him. Well, have you any reason to think something is wrong? Well, only the half-baked excuse he gave me for wanting to see me. Look, Hal, I realize this is just a hunch, but... It certainly sounds like it to me. But my hunches have saved your company a lot of dough on occasion. So how about it? Okay. Put it this way. If you run into something out there and clear it up, we'll pay the freight. If not, well, you just go ahead and have yourself a vacation at your own expense, okay? Oh, now, why don't you relax that iron grip on the purse strings for a change, huh? Why? What would you do? Okay, okay, but I warn you, Hal, if this does turn into a case for your company, my expense account is going to knock you right off your feet. Oh, now, wait a minute. Bye-bye. Johnny! It took me nearly four days to clear up the reports I had to finish. I wish now it hadn't, that I'd left Hartford immediately. Expense account item two, $133. Plane fare and all the incidentals I could think of, Hartford to Denver. I got there shortly after 7 a.m. Item three, $50, deposit on a drive-your-own car, in which I promptly headed north and west on Highway 40. That is, after getting out of the traffic in Denver itself, and believe me, that town has it. The 200-mile drive to Craig was routine except for the lush green hills, the snow-top mountains, the vast meadows and forests. Colorful Colorado, they call it, and it sure is. Finally, about noon, I pulled into Craig and stopped at the Cosgrove Hotel for lunch. That's item 4, 350. From the waitress, I got directions to the Lazy J.D. Ranch. About eight miles south on the Yampa River, just off Route 789. You want some dessert? Oh, no, thanks. This is fine. Hey, you, uh... You one of the relatives? Relatives? Oh, of course not. You're too late. 
too late for what? It was real beautiful, though. Half the town turned out for it, and most of the big ranchers. What are you talking about? Oh, my gosh, it's after 1.30. Look, I'm not supposed to be on duty now, and I got a date with my boyfriend. Hey, well, now... Excuse me, now, I wait gotta a go. second. Just say the cashier in the lobby. Well, but look, I... Okay. I paid my check to the cashier, went out to my car, climbed in, and headed for the Lazy J.D., there must have been several thousand acres to the ranch. All rich, green, healthy-looking pasture land. And Lord knows how many head of beef cattle. The main ranch house was a rather small but well-kept affair near the gate to the road from the highway. And then I saw it. A long piece of black crepe hanging on the door frame. I, uh, how do you do? My name is Dollar, Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny Dollar. Why didn't you come before? What? He begged you to come, didn't he? To come right away? Mr. Denham? Yes, but I then told why him... why didn't you? You might have saved him. Saved him? Yes, saved him. We buried him this morning. And I think he was murdered. <laughs> Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. The American writer Christopher Morley once wrote, When you sell a man a book, you don't sell him just 12 ounces of paper, ink, and glue. You sell him a whole new way of life, unquote. Now, that goes double when you give, not sell, a book. But the gift of 550 books to little children increases the legacy tenfold. Near the end of 1960, the employees of the Chase Manhattan Bank started a people-to-people -people program with such a gift to school children of a town in Tanganyika. That's on the southeast coast of Africa. And to give you an idea how the books were received by the children, let me first quote from Francis Bacon. He's an English writer of a few centuries back. He said... Some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. In the past, children in Tanganyika may have done a little tasting and chewing and a little swallowing and digesting, but there's one certain thing. They wound up devouring the books they received from the United States. And they did so much of it that they, the ones in high school anyway, were able to reach the level of English children their age and pass the exams at the same time. That takes a lot of book learning, as they say. Now, the gift of these books from the United States of America may have seemed a small thing to the senders, but the boys in Tanganyika who received them know that they've opened a whole new way of life. They've greatly increased understanding in the classroom of freedom the right of all men everywhere. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Bum Steer Matter. The tall, beautiful girl standing in the doorway of the ranch house at the Lazy J.D. outside of Craig, Colorado, was dressed in black. The red about her eyes showed that she'd been crying. But there were no tears in them now. Jake Denham was my father, Mr. Dollar. I'm Virginia. And you think he was murdered? Why do you think he called and begged you to come out here? Any idea who might have done it? Yes. Big Mike. Mike Craven. Who's he? He owns the Sea Lucky Star and wants to own every other ranch around here, and he will unless somebody stops him. How did your father die? Anthrax. That's what they said it was. I thought that was a disease of cattle. People, too, if they get infected from the cattle. And that's what happened to your father? That's what they say, but there's no anthrax around here. Our ranch is clean. Look, let's go inside and sit down and talk about this. Sure, I'll talk about it. If only somebody will listen. In here, Johnny. Oh, thanks. Are you, uh, all alone? Now that Dad's gone, he and I ran the ranch. Now it's up to me. Sit down. Thank you. Virginia, were you trying to tell me out there that you think somebody tried to infect your herd with anthrax? What would you think? Who is your father's doctor? Dr. Regis Ross from in town. Who are you? Well, my name is Dollar, insurance investigator. Say, you fellows act pretty fast, don't you? 
Sometimes you're in all right now, honey. I guess so. I told the hands that you're in full charge now. They'll take their orders from you. Or from me. Or from... Sure. Oh, sure, I guess that's best. Thank you, Pete. They might as well get used to it, because after we're married... Look, honey, why wait any longer? I know this is a bad time to talk about yes, it. But please. I also know, and you know, that this is no time for you to try to go it alone. But what about your medical school? I'll give it up. This is a lot more important than... Well, you're a lot more important. Oh, look, Jenny, you stalled me for a long, long time. I know, Pete, because I... Don't you see I can run this ranch alone? No. You need me, honey. And I'm here to help you. Do you know how Dad felt? Sure. That all I wanted was this ranch. The same as he felt about anybody else who ever came here. Just who are you, Pete? This is Pete Kermer, Johnny. My fiancé, I guess. That's right. Didn't I see a Kermer ranch on the way out here, a small one? That's right. My pa's. He's Carl Kermer. Well, what do you think caused the death of Virginia's dad? Just what everybody says, Mr. Dollar. Galloping anthrax from that Hereford. Then why did he send for Mr. Dollar to come? I'm afraid we'll never know, honey. Well, I do. It's because he knew something was going to happen to him. Where is that steer now? Buried. On orders from the vet and the state inspector. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? You said investigator. Hadn't you better talk to Dr. Ross? Yeah, I guess so. Want to let me have his address? Sure. I'll write it down for you. And, uh, while you're at it, tell me where I can find the veterinarian. And that state inspector, too. Sure. Why not? When I left them a few minutes later, Pete was still making a quiet, but I must say effective pitch for Virginia's hand. Expense account item five, ten cents for a phone call to the state inspector. He told me he'd never seen the infected steer on the lazy JD, that he was confined to his bed at the time. I called the vet's office, and he was expected back shortly. So I sat around the hotel lobby and glanced over some magazines. And then, in one of them, I found an article that made my eyes fairly pop out of my head. Item six, I called the vet again. He was in. You caught me just in time, Mr. Dollar. I was about to drive over to the Sea Lucky Star Ranch for dinner. Mike Craven and I are old friends. That's so? Yes, ever since we roomed together at college. Oh, I see. I understand you're the man who spotted the anthrax out at the Lazy J.D. Yes, sir, that's right. Just that one Herford. How it ever got to him, I'll never know. The rest of that herd is absolutely clean. That poor old Jake Denham, too. You think he became infected from that steer? Well, how else could it be? Galloping anthrax, just like that. Doctor, where is that steer buried, do you know? Yes, I had it buried myself. It's some miles out in the far corner of the lazy J.D. property. Then phone the Sea Lucky Star and call off your dinner date. You and I are going out to take a look at that carcass. Oh, no, just a minute, young <clears throat> Uh, investigator, uh, did you say you are? That's right. Uh -huh. well, I, I suppose you have some authority. What I don't have, I can get. Tell me, Doctor, is there some reason why you don't want me to see the carcass of that steer? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, let's, uh, let's go. Along the way, we picked up two fellows who were handy with pick and shovel. It was almost dark now, so I bought a couple of powerful flashlights at one of the local hardware stores. That's item 7925. It took a couple of hours for the two men to dig down to the carcass of the steer, but they finally exposed one flank of the unfortunate animal. Yeah. So you, you sure planted this critter deep, Doc. There's part of him. Give us a few more minutes, and we'll have uh, it. No, wait. Huh? Uh, Mr. Dollar, come down here into the hole. Sure. What's the matter, Doc? The color of that carcass. The... I don't understand this. What are you talking about? Well, this doesn't make sense. The deterioration and putrefaction that always occurs when it simply isn't here. You mean it's possible it wasn't anthrax killed this steer? But I'm sure that all the symptoms, the swellings in the subcutaneous connective tissues, in the interstices of the muscles and lymphatic glands, and in the membranes of the mouth and tongue. They were all there, and they were edematous, too. I Could some just... poison have possibly produced those poison. symptoms? Poison? Yeah, look, I read in a magazine this afternoon that strychnia often produces symptoms very much like those of tetanus, lockjaw. Yes, that's true. 
Not a poison that would... Good heavens. Yeah? Why, I haven't heard of it since my college days. Quintanogen sulfide. But why? Good question. Uh, no, Dollar. Because it wouldn't explain the death of old Jake Denham. If it was anthrax. What? Or was he poisoned too? Good heavens. You mean you wait think a minute, that he... Wait a minute. Doctor, the brand on the rump of this animal. Well, that's Denham's own brand, the Lazy Jake. Yeah, and... but it looks to me like it was put on over another brand. Yes. Yes, you're right. Any way of finding out what the original brand was? No, no. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Dollar. The other side. The inside of the hide might show it. Then, Doctor, you got a skinny job to do. All right. Uh, hand me my bag there, please. Okay, here you are. Go to it, Doc. Thank you. Oh. That poison. How much to infect a man? Well, even a, even a small scratch on the skin could absorb enough to be fatal. No wonder the Dr. Ross... Ross was the one who treated Jake Denham. Yeah. No wonder we couldn't understand why death came so... Well? No. Can you see what the original brand was? Yes. Yes, I can. I'm afraid so. Let me hold the light a little. Oh, I see. But I can't believe it, Mr. Dollar. Pretty clear, though, isn't it? See Lucky Star. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. A couple of thousand years ago, the ancient sage Diogenes remarked that all things are in common among friends. Well, he didn't mean that only material goods were in common among friends, but that they shared their troubles as well. For a long time, the United States Armed Forces have been a friend in time of need, during fires, floods, and pestilence all over the world. Many peoples of the earth have come to believe in the friendship which the U.S. military personnel have spread for so many years, and the calls for help they answer in time of personal emergency a response which has always been immediate. Not long ago, a Korean Buddhist nun was suffering from beriberi, an advanced form of acute malnutrition. But she was living in an isolated monastery deep in the Korean hills and valleys. Her sister nuns contacted the nearest Army Signal Corps relay station and wheels began turning. In no time, an Army helicopter landed at the station's helipad. American soldiers carried the stricken nun to the copter. She was flown to a waiting ambulance and whisked away to the hospital. Her recovery was rapid, thanks to the United States Army, her newfound friends. Army helicopter men helped in many other ways. Over the 108 islands of the Ryukyus that spread from southern Japan to northern Formosa, Army helicopters are constantly whirling their blades as they hop from one island to another on missions of mercy. They bring food donated by American women on Okinawa, or they bring vital medicine to save a life. They also bring friendship and understanding and freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Bum Steer Matters. <laughs> Looks pretty bad, doesn't it, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, Doc. It looks as though this Herbert Steer was brought over from the Sea Lucky Star, was rebranded with a lazy JD, was given the poison to make it look like it died of anthrax. Yeah, but Mike Craven owns the Sea Lucky Star. I know him, Dollar. I've known him ever since our college days. Medical college? Oh, no, just during the preparatory years, but... But Big Mike couldn't have done a thing like this. Big Mike has wanted to get his hands on the Lazy J.D. for years, well, hasn't he? of course, he? over a lot of other big ranches, but I'd take my life on it. He'd never do it. Hey, wait, wait. Yeah? You should have taken that left turn to get to the Sea Lucky Star. That's not where we're heading. Yeah. Well, then where? If I remember correctly, it's this road to the right, here. Well, you mean the K-Bar K? Got any better ideas? Well, I'll be... <laughs> The ranch house is dark. It won't be for long. Would you call this a good ranch, Doc? No, old Carl has been just a hanger on. He hasn't made the place pay for quite some... What's going on out there? Who is it? Johnny Dollar, Pete. Oh? 
I want to talk to you. Oh, uh, sure. Door's open. I'll be right down. Come on, Doc. Let's see if I can find the light switch. This flashlight will do. And we're going on upstairs. Huh? Wait down there. I'll be right down. We'll be right up. Well, now, wait a minute, if you don't mind. Wow, wow, wow. Nice place you have up here. Look, I asked you to wait down... Dr. Cummings. Uh, I'm sorry, Peter, but this... How'd you make out with Virginia Denham, Pete? Convince her to marry you? That's not your business, Mr. Dollar. Now, just what do you want? Pretty nice ranch to get your hands on that lazy J.D. I beg your pardon. Hmm. Combination bedroom and study, huh? As Virginia told you, I've been going to college. Yeah, medical school. Nice set of books you have here. Of course, I'll have to give that up now. Oh, you're going to have to give up a lot of things. What? Where did you get it, Pete? What was the name of that stuff, Doctor? Quintanagen sulfide. What do you know about... Well? I don't know what you're talking about. Then why the marker in this book on toxicology? Marker? That was a foolish thing to do, Pete, a dead giveaway. Yeah, I told you. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yep, right here. Quintanagen sulfide. I... I had never heard of it. You're lying, Pete. Uh, no. Giving it to that Herford was probably a cinch. Listen, you... But how did you give it to Jake Denham? Dollar, that's something you'll never live to know. Oh, look, now, wait a minute. Put the thing away. No. I'll stand back. I said look out. You... Stop! Oh, thanks, Doc. Yeah. I, I guess he'd forgotten all about you until you landed that chair on his head. Yes, now, I suppose I'll have to patch this, uh, patch him up a bit. Oh, absolutely. He'll have to look nice for the trial, won't he, Doc? Mm-hmm. Expense account item eight, fifty-five ninety-five. Living expenses in Craig while waiting for the autopsy on Jake Denham. Mm-hmm. And yes, the same drug was used on him as on the Herford steer. A small bottle of the rare drug was found in Pete Kermer's trunk. So Pete's not only lost a chance for a nice ranch, but for living very long. Expense account total, including incidentals and fare back to Hartford, six eighteen fifty. Um, on second thought, how's about just sending that check to the community chest? Then I'll feel a little better about this case. And about myself, too. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, an old ghost town out in Montana. But one of the ghosts carries a 38 Colt. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Gene Tatum, Will Wright, Jack Edwards, Howard McNear, Sam Edwards, and Forrest Lewis. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dan Coverly speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.